Let's take a look at EVGA's Precision X. Well, I just opened Open Broadcaster so you saw it shot all the way up there. This gauge here, it will show you what your uh, current GPU clock is. The newest uh, GPUs from NVIDIA feature uh, GPU Boost 2.0, so the clock will dynamically ramp up uh, whenever it needs to. So right now it's just running at 135, not using much power at all, just barely, barely using any. When you get into your games, you'll notice that it'll go up, and then sometimes it'll you know, get into this area here, depending on what you know, GPU you have. Right now we have a GTX 760 in the, in the machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk through all the interface, uh, take a look at some of the stuff that's going on behind the scenes, and uh, just do a quick bit of overclocking, or just give you guys some pointers on how to overclock. I'm not going to do any overclocking in this video. Now, um, the first thing you'll see here is we have a power target and a temperature target, uh, and you guys can use those to achieve an overclock. But right here's what you really are going to be messing with when you're overclocking, your uh, GPU clock offset, and that's going to just add something on top of what GPU Boost 2.0 is already doing. And I usually start off small, like 25 megahertz, and, and then test it out with a game, usually a canned benchmark like Heaven or something that's really going to push the GPU. Uh, because if it works in Heaven or in uh, you know, maybe the new Bioshock Infinite or Met Metro Last Light, if it works in those, uh, it'll typically work in most of the older games as well. So try that out. And uh, if it works, come and add a little more. You know, maybe do uh, 40 or 50. And you'll notice at some point, you'll um, you'll see the GPU boost clock will go and it'll stay at like, you know, 1200 or 1240. Even if you add 60, 70, whatever, it'll stay there. You're gonna need to start increasing your power. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, for the memory, this will erase your effective memory clock at like 500. That's fine for most GPUs. You can do that. You can really push this a lot more than you can push the, uh, the GPU clock, even though you can push them both quite a bit. All right, so let's say you hit a brick wall. What do you want to do? Well, you want to come up here and you want to raise your power target just a little bit. You don't want to go crazy because you got to keep your temperature in mind. This card is the ACX, uh, or it has the ACX cooling unit from NVIDIA, uh, actually from EVGA. So it stays nice and cool and we can really push this without worrying, you know, that much. Once it gets toward the 90s, you want to make sure you bring it down. So, you know, add a little power. Um, you can set your power to be like 103, 104. Right now we have the temp uh, target linked. You can unlink that and say like, hey, listen, I do not want this to get any hotter than 80. And it will, you know, make sure if it gets 80, it's going to throttle things. So you got some options there. Now, as far as keeping things cool, right now it's on auto. I like leaving it on auto. Um, you know, they know when to ramp the fan up and down based upon the temperature. But hey, if you think you know what you're doing, you can go over here and check mark this. And then you can mess with the fan curve. As it gets hotter, you can set different points and they'll say, hey, at 60, we want this thing to ramp up. And oh, whoa, well, there we go. Let me grab that. Yeah, ramp up. There we go. You, you see, you get the idea. You can just move this around. So, yeah, you can do that. I'm not going to do that, though. I'm leaving mine on auto, but hey, it's up to you. Over here, we um, have monitoring and voltage. Now, voltage, I'll bring that up. We now have this. This is kind of new. Now, if you have multiple GPUs, you can select those. Over voltage, everything's going to the other monitor. Yes, you can damage your card. You click apply, uh, and this will allow you to raise um, you know the voltage even higher than you normally would be able to. I'm not going to use that because everything's running fast enough for me. K-Boost essentially will ramp up everything and, and it, it kind of disables GPU Boost 2.0. Uh, I don't like it. It kind of runs everything hot and fast all the time. So it's not for me. It, some people say they've uh, you know achieved higher FPS with it, but I have not seen any benefit in that, so I'm not going to be using K-Boost at all. Unless I want to melt things, then I'll do it. So there's that. Now let's open up monitoring here and just go through some of the properties. Now after you uh, find an overclock that you like, you can set it up to start with Windows and start it min minimize so that it's you know just running in you that, that that clock speed is going to be there all the time. Enable external access application via Bluetooth. Yes, if you have a Bluetooth enabled phone and the uh, uh, the app, you can use it with this software. So you can sit there with your phone and just have all the fun you want, which is kind of ridiculous. Of course, there's our fan monitoring. And monitoring, you have lots of different things that you can monitor here. You can see everything there, scrolling through it. Oh, log file, those are handy if you're you know, trying to figure out what exactly went wrong. Yeah, you can set up a spot and even uh, you know, set a, a size limit, so that's kind of handy. So that can be really handy for getting some fine precision with EVGA Precision X. All right, down here, uh, we've got our, um, just our different power graph properties. This is what I like. You can show it as an OSD in your games. 
if you have a Logitech keyboard with the LCD, you can have it pop up on that, or you can have it show up in a uh, tray icon. So on-screen display is kind of nice in games. You know, click on the different ones. Yes, show this one. Just pick which ones you want to show in the OSD, and then you can set them up that way. And here you can configure the OSD even more, uh, as far as some hotkeys go to make it appear and disappear. Screen capturing. Yes, indeed. You can do some screen capturing, bitmap, PNG, JPEG. Uh, hotkeys, you guys can set up hotkeys for all your different profiles. And uh, this can be really handy if you have different overclocks that you know work better in certain games. You can set it up so that you just have to press a hotkey. It'll load that profile, then you can play your game. It's kind of nice. And uh, here we can set our language. Dutch, yes, indeed. And uh, you can also change your skin. Let's go ahead and put it on the uh, Precision X uh, ACX skin. Yes, it changed. Everything's different now. All right, down here, we've got our performance logs, of course. Frame rate target, this is kind of fun. Now, the frame rate target will allow you to set a, um, a maximum FPS that you want to target in your games. 60 is good because it'll match up with the uh, refresh rate of this monitor. Um, but, you know, if you've got a 120 hertz monitor, you can set it to 120 or whatever. If you're playing an old game, this can be nice because it will limit how far GPU Boost 2.0 will go. So, you know, if you're playing like System Shock or whatever, I was playing it and it was hovering around like 400 to 500 megahertz because that's all it needed to hit 60 frames per second. And it was staying there, keeping everything nice and cool. It's gonna make the life of your card last a little longer and it'll just keep the power consumption lower than normal. So that's that. You can manage all your different profiles here, save all your different profiles here. And that's pretty much um, the basic tutorial you should be able to jump in and start playing with this now. If you do have questions, hop into the forum and post them there. We'll all be there to help you because we love you. We love you guys so much. So you should definitely subscribe and check out our other GPU reviews. Do it now or pay the price. I've spoken. All right. I'll see you guys next time.